Hi right, guys, Mike here from Cop3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be adding another feature to our first person controller. This time, we're gonna be adding a relatively simple health system. Now, this is gonna include health regeneration, like in most modern FPS games. So you'll take some damage, a number in the background will go down, and then over time, that health will regenerate. So there's not really much more to say on this. We're just going to jump straight in right after I thank Gigatown3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go check him out on Twitter. Go check out his website and keep up to date with what the guy is up to. And I also just want to thank everybody supporting me over on Patreon. You guys are fantastic. All right, so let's just jump in. We can see we're where we left off. And just because I don't want to have to deal with those footsteps... I am going to turn my use footsteps feature toggle off. There you go. You can already see those feature toggles coming in handy. So let's have a quick think about what we're going to need. We're going to need a value for our current health, which is going to be private because obviously we don't want to affect that anywhere else apart from inside our first person controller script. We're going to need a value for our max health. We're going to need a value for the amount of time we want to wait before we start to regenerate our health. And then we want a value for the amount of health that we regenerate per tick. So let's open up a first person controller script and we'll start adding some of these variables in. All right, so let's start by adding in another header. So I'm going to do this quite near the top because obviously health is a quite important one. So we're going to do header health parameters. First of all, we're going to need serialized field, private flow, max health. And by default, I'm going to give. 100. Next, we'll do another serialized field, private flow, time before regen starts. And I'm going to give that a value of three. So once we take damage, we're going to take three seconds before we start to regenerate our health. Another serialized field, that's going to be another private flow. And this is going to be a health value increment. And I'll set that to one. So every time we do a health regeneration tick, I want the player to gain one health. Next, another serialized field, private float, health, time increment. And I'm going to set that to 0.1. So the player's health is going to go up by one every 0.1 of a second after three seconds of taking damage. And then obviously we're going to need some private variables. So we're going to do a private float, current health, and because we're going to be doing this using another core routine, I want to keep a reference to that because we want to start and stop that whenever the player takes more damage. So I'm going to set a private core routine regenerating health. So the reason I'm doing that is because if we take damage, that core routine is going to start a three second timer. Once that three second timer is up, we'll start to increase our health again. But if our player takes damage again after two seconds, for example, we want to stop that core routine and restart that timer. And by doing this, by caching it in a local variable, we can just call stop core routine on that particular one. So really useful tip there. Next, what we want to do when we start the game, we want to make sure that our current health is automatically set to our maximum health. So we already have in our awake method where we're already setting our default values. So let's set current health equal to max health, where we're caching all of our default values. And now we can get onto our methods and the core routine. So I'm just gonna scroll down to somewhere where I think's reasonable. So we'll do it after we handle the footsteps. So in here, we're gonna need two methods and a core routine. We're gonna need one method, which is a private void apply damage and we're going to pass in a float of the amount of damage that we want to apply to the player we're also going to need another private void kill player which obviously is when our health reaches zero we're going to fire off that kill player method and then down with the rest of our core routines i'm going to put in a private i enumerator regenerate health so let's start with our apply damage obviously the first thing we want to do is deduct uh, past in damage from our current health. So we'll just do current health minus equals uh, damage that we've passed in. Next, we want to check if that current health is now less than or equal to zero, we want to call the kill player method. 
or else if our regenerating health core routine is not equal to null, we want to stop that core routine because that means we've taken damage while we're already regenerating health. So we want to stop that, like I said before. And then after all that, we'll set regenerating health equal to start core routine, regenerate health. So after we've taken damage, this is where we're going to start to regenerate. But obviously, we want to wait those three seconds. So let's jump on down to our core routine, and we can get started with that. So let's do a yield return new wait for seconds. And this is going to be our time before regen starts. So that's going to wait for three seconds before continuing this core routine, which is exactly what we want. Next, we're just going to cache the time to wait in between each tick as a wait for seconds. So we'll just set a new local wait for seconds, time to wait. We'll set that equal to new wait for seconds, health time increment. Now we'll do a while statement. So while our current health is less than our max health, we'll loop over this. And what we want to do, we'll do our current health plus equals our health value increment, which is currently set to one. And then we'll yield return our time to wait, which is our 0.1. There's just a couple more things that we can do in here just to make sure that this is as clean as possible. So obviously, if our current health is 99.5 and we try and add one, that's going to take it above our max health. So after we've added our health value increment, we'll just check if current health is greater than max health, we'll set current health equal to max health. That'll just catch that little error for us. And then remember, outside of our while statement, we want to set, after everything's completed, regenerating health to null. And the last little thing I just want to do is, inside of our kill player method, I'm going to set current health equal to zero, just again, in case, like before, we take too much health away from our current health, we want to make sure that our current health is always going to be set to zero. And if our regenerating health is not equal to null, so if we're currently regenerating health and we've died, we want to stop the core routine so we don't regenerate health while we're lying on the ground dead. And I'm also just going to print out dead at the end of it. Obviously, you can do whatever you like, though. You'd restart the game, you'd take the player to a round over menu, anything like that, that bit's up to you. All right, so that's all well and good. We've got the way to actually affect our character's health, but how do we actually apply that damage? How do we call this applied damage method? Well, we're going to do this through actions. Now, I have done a tutorial on actions before, so if you've seen that or you already know what they are, this might be a little bit of second nature to you. But I'm going to try and explain what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, as I'm doing it. So let's just scroll up to the top, and we're going to need another three variables inside of our health. Where is it? I've lost it. There it is. So first of all, actions are basically events and delegates rolled into one singular package. So we can declare a public static action. Now, we won't see that just yet because we need to remember to import the system namespace, or at the top, add using system. And our first is going to be on take damage. So we want to fire off on take damage whenever our player takes damage, and then anything listening out for that action can do whatever it wants with it. So the one change that I am going to make is I'm going to pass in a float to actually tell that method how much damage is being applied. So after our action, we'll put our angle brackets and pass in a float. Now we're going to need two more actions that we can call. So let's just copy that twice because they're both going to be actions. They're both going to take in floats. This time it's going to be on damage and another one on heal. Now the reason I'm doing this is because in just a minute I'm going to implement some really basic UI that's going to tell you how much health you have left. And we're going to update that based on these actions. So let's scroll on back down, and I've just actually noticed we have a little bit of an error here. This is because the system namespace and the Unity engine namespace both have a class called random. And 
at the moment, the compiler doesn't know which one we're referring to. So what we're going to have to do, we're going to add Unity Engine at the start of these randoms for our footsteps. Now, if you don't have the footsteps part implemented, then you're not going to get that error. Don't worry about it. It's just in case you're following along with this and you want to know why you've got that little error there. Okay, so inside of our apply damage is where we're gonna call on damaged. So underneath where we've actually set our new current health, we'll call on damage and we'll pass in our current health. So now anything that's listening to on damage will get access to our current health variable. The problem is if nothing's listening to it, that line of code is gonna give us an error. So the way we get around that we do a null check. So on damage, question mark, dot invoke. And on the invoke is where we pass our current health. Now what that's gonna do, that's gonna check with the question mark, is anything listening to on damage? If it is, then invoke it and pass in the parameters. If nothing's listening to it, then we're not gonna bother with it. That's basically the equivalent of saying, if on damage equals null, do nothing, or else actually call it. It's just a shorthand way of saying it. Next, we wanna do something extremely similar inside of our regenerate core routine. But this time, before we actually start the new tick weight, we're gonna call on heal, because obviously our current health has changed. If we're using UI to display that, we wanna update that UI. So this is where we're gonna get that callback. And then finally, to actually apply the damage, we want to call apply damage whenever on take damage is called. So because we're actually going to be using that action inside of this script, what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to subscribe to that. And again, if you've already watched my actions tutorial, I go into a little bit more detail in there. But basically what we're going to do, we're going to add two more methods to this, two reserved methods, which are on enable and on disable. So in our on enable method, we want to say that whenever on take damage happens, we're going to subscribe our apply damage method. So basically, if something calls on take damage, we're going to call on apply damage inside of our script. And then in our on disable, we want to unsubscribe from that. So we're going to change the plus equals to a minus equals. So if we were to ever get rid of our player, we don't have a loose reference just floating about. We always want to unsubscribe if we have subscribed to a delegate like this. All right, so that should be up and running now, but we're gonna just add a couple more things. We're gonna add one, something to actually damage our player. Two, we're gonna update some UI to actually show us that value. So let's jump into Unity. I'm just gonna copy one of these I'm going to assign a new material to it, so I'm going to do red. So whenever we actually collide with this object, I want to take damage. Let's drag this up a little bit, and we're going to set our collider to is trigger. So let's open up our damage test, and we're going to do on trigger enter, and then if our other dot compare tag is equal to player, we know it's our player that's gone into the danger zone. And we're going to call first person controller dot on take damage. And we're going to pass in a value there. So I'm going to pass in 15. So whenever our player walks over this red object, we're going to want to take 15 damage. So let's apply our damage test script to it. And just before we do any UI, what I want to do, I want to make sure that this is actually working. So I'm going to select my first person controller and enable debug mode and I wanna keep an eye on my current health. So we see by default it goes to 100. If I walk over this red object, we take 15 health, and then our health starts to regenerate. Perfect, but we want a little bit of UI for this. So again, this is just gonna be an additional part of the tutorial. You already have a working health system now, you can do with that whatever you want. But what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna set a new UI up. I'm gonna call this health text and let's just do a quick setup on this so i want this to be anchored into our top left corner let's drag this over a little bit 
and we'll increase the text size. Add a new script called UI. We'll add in a text mesh pro element that we can assign in the inspector, and that's gonna be for our health text. And just like we did in the actual first person controller, we're gonna to subscribe to the other two actions inside of the from our UI script. So again, we're gonna need an on enable and an on disable, and we're gonna need a method inside of here to fire whenever one of those actions fires. So that's gonna be a private void update health. And this time we're gonna pass in a float for our current health, because obviously that's the value we wanna display on screen. And just like you'd always do inside of our update health, we're gonna do health text dot text equals to current health to string. And I'm just gonna mask it. So it's always got a lead in zero by to string then pass in the double zero mask. Now in our on enable, we wanna set First purpose controller dot on damage. So whenever on damage is called, we want to fire off our update health method. So we'll subscribe it to it. So that's plus equals update health. And again, if you're paying attention, you know we need to unsubscribe this. And again, exactly the same for our first person controller on heal. Because obviously, if we start to heal, we want to again update that health UI but going in the opposite direction, going up. So just like that, that should work because inside of our first person controller, whenever we take damage, we invoke on damage and pass in our current health. And then during the regenerate core routine, we call on heal and again, pass in our current health. So let's drop our UI script onto our canvas and we'll drag in our health text to our health text parameter. If we hit play, we should see ah uh, the first thing we need to do inside of our UI class, we're going to add a start method. And this time we're going to update our health to be 100. So when our game starts, we've got max health in our UI. Hit play. We see top left, we've got 100. If I walk over this, we have 85. Walk over it again, it'll keep going down by 15. If I wait three seconds, slowly starts incrementing up until we get that 100 health. And it's just as easy as that. So now what you need to do, you need to decide what you want to happen when the player dies. And if you want any additional effects, you can subscribe to that on take damage or on damaged action, and you can apply those varying things. So I hope it's been useful for you. I hope you've understood it. If not, like I said, I do have that tutorial dedicated to actions already on my channel go and check that out that might shed a little bit more light on it but there we go we have a health system now so good luck with any projects that you're working on i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching guys if you like the content remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly unity tutorials